silence about America's war on the poor. 140 million people live in poverty today, and it's not because people are lazy or unwilling to work hard, but because politicians have blocked living wages and health care and undermined union rights and wage increases. You can see the war on the poor all around us. The richest 101% in our country own more wealth than the bottom 90% combined. State houses across the country block minimum wages increases, minimum wage increases while passing laws that cut crucial safety net programs. 38.2 million children live in poverty. Millions of people today can't even afford water. While systemic racism in the form of racialized voter suppression tactics, tactics have continually operated in the post-Civil War rights era. It's dramatic rise in the past decade has curtailed and democratic freedoms of millions in the U.S. There are fewer voting rights today than there were 50 years ago. That's right. And these racist laws hurt not just people of color, but poor whites whose lives are also appended by the politicians put in office by the violent extremi extremism that is voter suppression. Right. If you believe in health care, Living wages and addressing poverty, you better make sure you understand voter suppression. It hits black people first, but it undermines all people. It affects us all. Milita militarism defines us as a nation when we spread 53 cents, when we spend 53 cents of every federal discre discretion discretionary dollar on the military and only 15 cents on anti poverty programs. Our nation's moral narrative is shaped by so-called Christian nationalists who have forgotten scriptures calls for us to care for the sick, women and children, immigrants, and the poor, That's the right. least among us. Yes. Many of these people push a, narrow, a narrowly defined moral agenda that artificially divides us with debates over the mor morality of same-sex marriage or abortion. But a true moral agenda tackles issues like wages, health care, voting rights, immigrant rights, gay and transgender rights, criminal justice reform, and clean water and air. Amen. Every major religious tradition places challenging oppression and criticizing systems of justice at the center of its moral considerations. In addition, the moral principles of our Constitution are focused on establishing justice for the general welfare. We have lost this direction and a moral revival is necessary to change course and save the heart and soul of our democracy. Yes. A true moral agenda seeks to fulfill the de democratic promise enshrined in the U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Reminding the nation of the truths we hold to be self-evident and the values we hold dear. In 2016 presidential election, there were 25 debates in the primaries and the general election. Not one of these debates focused significantly on voter suppression, poverty, ecological devastation, or the war economy. Shame. All of which are, are, are central issues that impact most of us living in these United States most of the time. For too long, the accepted moral narrative in America has blamed poor people for their poverty, pitted people against each other, separated systemic racism, racism from poverty and ecology, and the war economy, and spread the lie of scarcity, the idea that there is not enough to go around. Uh, it's all connected. Amen. We demand a new moral discourse in this nation. One that says being poor is not a sin, but systemic poverty is. Yes. yes. Every choice is a moral choice, especially when it deals with poor people, children, and health care. And so we need a moral revival in this country. When there's an emergency, an ambulance doesn't need to stop, at, stop for red lights. Dr. King once said the country needs ambulance drivers who will ignore the red lights of the system. I'm ready to break the silence and speak out for the change we need.
Yes. That's why I'm joining ten, tens of thousands of people for 40 days of nonviolent direction, I mean direct action, as part of a new poor people's campaign. We're taking our demand for moral revival to po 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 politicians at the Capitol here in Providence and in 40 states across the country. I'm willing to do what it takes to make our message heard. I will march, I will protest, I will vote, even at the risk of arrest. The next six weeks are just the beginning. This is the start of a multi-year movement and we won't stop until we end America's war on the poor. Yes. Yeah. Someone is hurting our people. <laughs> and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore.